We now have a presentation from Unifor on leveraging AI and automation to transform the future of contact centers. Contact centers are often the entry point for most customers. Um, and so I guess, as we all know, they play a pivotal role in meeting that whole um, you know, customer expectation. However, um, with the research um, and insights that Unifor have gathered from not just in Australia, but across the world, they have identified that a lot of businesses do struggle to keep up with increasing expectations for high quality customer service. So join us in this session um, and gain insight to learn the best practices from experts on how AI and automation is gonna transform the contact center. Looking forward to it and please as always, submit any questions, thoughts, comments in the Q&A tab, um, and we will get back to you with our answers. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, all right, you ready? Yeah. All right. So just uh, count down to five and then start recording. Just give me some, some blank uh, audio. And then if you need to restart at any point, um, just take a five minute break and then ask the question again. Um, so if, and if you have any questions, as always, just ping me. All right. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to welcome all our listeners today. Today we have Robert Pedro from Arise. Robert, welcome to the uh, video cast. How are you? Good. How about you, Jafar? Happy to be here. Excellent. Uh, we, so uh, Robert and I have known each other for the last one year. We've been working together, both our organizations. I'm representing Unifor. Unifor is a contact center automation SaaS company based out of Palo Alto uh, with presence in, in Singapore, in Japan, in India, uh, and hopefully soon in mainland Europe as well. Um, Robert, why don't you introduce Arise? Absolutely. Um, again, thank you for having us here with you today. Super excited about the partnership we have with Unifor. And here at Arise, we are a leader in work at home customer care um, and have been working at home for the last 25 years. So I know many of our listeners today have been doing it maybe for the last 12, 13 months, if you will, um, as a byproduct of the pandemic. But 25 years is a lot of experience and hopefully we'll have quite a bit to share with, share with folks today as we, as we talk about this important subject. Excellent. So let's dive right away. So Arise is a work from home leaders. How has COVID impacted you over the last one year and what has changed, let's say pre-COVID, during COVID, and what do you see in a post-COVID world? Yeah. So so great question. You know, the, the good news uh, for us um, is that nothing changed um, when COVID happened. Um, we had the great benefit of Again, being virtual first from the onset of our business. So while many other players were struggling to kind of move capacity to home, we were able to deliver 114% of our customers' capacity requirements and saw no impact from COVID. So it's a great example of why I think many organizations are thinking about how this becomes an ongoing strategy for their businesses, even in a post-COVID world. And the way we think about work from home customer support is completely different from traditional customer support solutions with technology at the center of all to deliver a differentiated flex proposition, improve quality and lower TCO. And since we have technology at our core, it's why relationships with partners like Unifor are so important to our business as we think about go forward approach in a post COVID environment, how you can really augment the agent and at the same time, help those agent interactions to be even more positive for every customer that an agent touches. Excellent. Now, you being the leader in the in the work from home across all of North America, um, what what are the trend setting things that you have seen uh, in the last few months, uh, which has really made a difference from your customers saying that this is the direction in which. Uh, the work from home should be going. Yeah, it's it's a few things, Joffer. I mean, the first is the fact that you absolutely can provide service in all channels with pathways to brands, omni-channel systems, right? So it's all in the cloud. It's easy to integrate. 
The IT infrastructure can flex dramatically and handle thousands of individual endpoints. Clearly, the critical nature of having a robust security strategy in place, which is highly evolved um, as we've crafted it over the last 25 years is important. But I, I find what customers are most interested in at the end of the day is that the individuals that are in the Arise ecosystem are much more mature, experienced, and capable of handling the complex interactions that a human needs to um, support while working with an organization like Arise to automate some of the more simpler tasks um, through a relationship with a firm like Unifor that then drives contextual engagements um, at a much higher level, thus driving retention and referrals, creating a much higher overall NPS for their customers. I'm not sure if you find the same with some of the customers that you experience and interact with today, Joffer. It, it, is a, it is a similar story which is emerging. Look, for many years in the contact center industry, technology played a very minimal role. It was mm -hmm. only about, do you have the people to take the calls? And that mm -hmm. is how in the last 15, 20 years, uh, much of the industry operated. Uh, but I think so those days are over. Uh, yeah. people, want, people want more for value for their money. You know, when they mm -hmm. look at service providers like you, and, and you do this for a livelihood. So that means uh, they expect innovation from you. They expect, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more beyond what the contract says, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more beyond what the KPIs that have been agreed to. It is more about, can you make a material difference to the way the experience management is done by a large brand? You know, a brand can be anything like a Verizon, AT&T, mm -hmm. uh, anything like that. So so they are more reliant on you. And, uh, and I think so that journey got seriously expedited because of COVID. And yep. And, and that model, which was uh, your work from home model, which was a, let's say, a unique business model uh, for 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 a service organization, mm -hmm. and wasn't taken, um, you know, as the primary way of running a contact center. I think so. That equation has changed dramatically. You guys have shown to the world that it's a very reliable model, and with the infusion of technology, you can make a material difference. Others are catching up to you, so so you have some competition, which I can see. Absolutely, uh, growing up, uh, but yeah. you guys have done a fabulous job, phenomenal job, uh, in terms of of leading uh, the work from home model and making it now <clears throat> very central to any organizations. Um, you know, whether they are a, a fifty thousand seat contact center outsourcer or uh, you know a smaller organization with 500, 700 seats, people want a much more reliable partner who's expertise. So congratulations on that. You guys have done a fabulous job on that. Thank you there. I think the important thing to note as well um, is the, the need to continue to evolve technology and to continue to kind of research emerging technologies. And we've never been shy to um, test and be first into market with a particular technology, hence us being in this space for 25 years. But what I find most interesting is making sure that you're caring for technology on both ends of the spectrum. Sometimes it's really easy for us to be focused on technology to support the customers that are buying the services that the Arise platform provides. But we have very much been focused on technology that also enhances the agent experience, knowing that at the end of the day, if you can empower them with more tools, albeit more technology, if you will, to improve their ability, make their job easier at the end of the day, then it becomes a much simpler process for them to delight and create those experiences that customers at the end of the day are looking for, which is why as we look at individuals and organizations to partner with, such as Unifor, the, the criticality of your platform covering both ends of the spectrum, providing real value to the end customer um, through the feature set you have, but at the same time providing real value to the other side of the spectrum, i.e., if you will, improving the agent experience um, is really, really, really critical, and we're excited about that. Excellent. So now, with so we have established the fact that <clears throat> the world has changed in the contact center. Yes. And we've established the fact that work from home is a very reliable model, and it can deliver a lot of value. 
and technology will play a critical role like the journey uh, arises and taken and this partnership has been stated and I'm sure others have uh, others are in progress now what role do you think so AI will play uh, in the next generation contact centers operations uh, what role will machine learning play what role would uh, uh, sentiment analysis play um, in terms of taking the contact centers to the to the next level and providing a lot more um, interesting responses than the standard uh, yeah yeah listen i think technology has evolved it to a point that it absolutely should take a much more focused role in organizations determination on, around how they're spending dollars ai without question and machine learning um, is definitely the point now that we should be harnessing the data to improve the experience every single day so there's no doubt in my mind that you know as you're thinking about next gen contact center like that is now and you absolutely fundamentally have to have an ai solution in place or at least close to be considering uh, considering either whether or not it's partnering with the firm like Unifor or others, if you will, to really identify what your strategy is going to be. Listen, there's no question that there is so much data available in every single interaction that's occurring with the customer. To not use that data to improve the customer experience would be foolish. Now, whether or not that's data to understand how every frontline leader is engaging and supporting their frontline representative, whether or not that's to understand in real time customer pain points and to react quickly with some form of next best action, whether or not it's to use all of that statistical data to define, hey, most customers that call in with this need also have this need two or three, you know, two or three calls later, why not solve that now in the current call versus two or three calls later? With all of that data available, like absolutely has to be used to improve the customer experience. And I think now more than ever, organizations are really starting to realize that. All right, let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. um, give me the most important use case that you would like AI to solve for your operations. Uh, so you give a little bit of an insight into, uh, into what it can be, but let's define the use case. Okay, yeah. so the call comes in into the contact center. How would you like, uh, you know, the agent to be assisted with from the agent experience perspective? Uh, what are the kind of use cases that comes to your mind? Yeah, let's maybe just cover two or three really quickly. The first would be um, the ability to drive speed to proficiency, right? So there's there's so much on the job learning that has to occur for agents in the past. There's no doubt now that through machine learning that a tool like Uniforce tool can really provide the contextual information that an agent needs right now today with even a shortened learning cycle to be really effective at supporting a customer need. The second thing is there is a lot of waste as you think about um, the customer experience and our ability to get on to that next call and really address abandonment issues, which frankly are acceptable failure in our industry today. The fact that anyone has to be abandoned with so much technology available, that at the end of the day, we can drive improved handle time through forms of ACW automation um, and not having the agent have to do that because we're listening to the entire course or call, if you will, why not just automate that ACW? And then lastly, you know, things like next best action, right? To really be predictive, as I said before, about purpose of the calls of following, but nine times out of 10, when a customer calls about this, they're going to call back about the following. So how do we preempt that next call, either in the interaction today, solving in advance, being proactive there, or doing some proactive follow-up via automation to prevent that next call from happening as well. Excellent. And when you discuss these use cases with your end clients, and then you've got a, a you know a roster of some very excellent brand names, what is the appetite for these large, in large companies? You know, do they want to go on a journey? Uh, do, are they hesitant to take on this journey? Um, what is the reaction that you get from your clients when you? Um, when you discuss these ideas and use cases that you have? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. You know, I'd say it's a little bit of both, right? There's the there's a certain sense of hesitancy to say, 
can does this in fact occur? Like, can you actually do these things that you're indicating you can? And the fact of the matter is it's possible, right? There's plenty of use cases out there, even through our partnership with Unifor, there are clearly documented use cases where time and time again, we've been able to prove value. And the exciting part about firms like Unifor that are seeing these investments is they're learning very quickly, right? So there's incremental feature set, incremental capabilities that um, become available. But there is a sense of hesitancy to prove it out. With that being said, where it has been proven out um, and the more those use cases increase, we're finding is there's a significant need on the customer side. It's really dependent upon us to fill that need and at the end of the day, demonstrate for them the real value that we can create for their customers by putting a solution like this in place. All right, thank you. Any particular industry which comes to your mind, uh, which has shown a greater, uh, let's say, a hunger uh, for transformation versus some of the other. Look, there are certain industries that are very highly regulated, like insurance, mm -hmm. healthcare, uh, banking, uh, and, and uh, sometimes, it takes a, a lot of effort on their part because they have some very heavy infrastructure, government regulations. But there are certain industries like retail and, and telcos who have been a lot more, uh, let's say, the forefront of innovation. What have you observed? Yeah, we've seen very much the same. Um, E-commerce, travel and hospitality providers, you know, the telecom providers are a bit more open. Um, they also many times have infrastructure that makes it much easier to integrate with in order to kind of unpack and unlock some of these um, opportunities. But at the end of the day, I think very quickly they'll see fast followers and followers and in, in more of this regulated industry, if you will. You know, frankly, at the end of the day, a greater usage of automation, a greater usage of technology, actually, especially in these regulated um, areas, actually drives greater compliance at the end of the day. So I think what we'll find is more and more of these more highly regulated industries starting to pivot as a byproduct of the actual need that they have to automate um, and drive compliance. But early adopters in our experience have been travel and hospitality, telcos, um, and then in the retail and e-commerce sector. Perfect, no, that's very much in line. Uh, how about uh, you, you know, using technology to secure uh, work from home. How has that question been? Is this a question that you have seen uh, being asked more uh, since COVID or is this something that you think is almost a similar sort of, uh, you know, question when you start your pitches uh, to your clients existing as well as prospective? Uh, where, where, what do you think so is, needs to happen in terms of securing work from home, from an uh, infotech perspective, from certifications perspective, or even securing the hardware and, uh, and the other, uh, you know, tools that agents have. Yeah, no, it's a, listen, it's a really important subject as it relates to, you know, ensuring you've got a secure environment with which to perform activities work from home. You know, we knew it was important for us to invest in technology that drove security very early on, um, if you will, in our upbringing, which is why we have you know, the Arise Secure Desktop, if you will, um, which fully covers um, the entire um, agent desktop and make sure it's a secure environment um, that has been validated and pen tested, Lord knows how many times, to make sure that it is a secure environment um, that is tamper evident, if you will. So we completely prevent individuals from accessing systems and tools um, without use of that tool and as well tie it to their schedule because with folks at home, you wanna make sure they can only access systems and tools during the time in which they're scheduled to do so. Um, and then as you think about identity and making sure that leveraging voice and assessment data to validate that the individual on the other end of the phone is in fact um, who you expect it to be, both via voice and facial recognition becomes super critical. So as companies look to invest in technology, things around identity verification and identity validation are even more important now than ever. Um, and we've known that's critical for, for a long time. The benefit, right, as you think about an ecosystem of partners like Arise is that you 
traditionally have a much more mature, experienced service partner on the other end of the line, regardless of whether or not that's through chat, email, voice, or some type of social support, if you will. You know, you think about kind of average age, 38, typically college educated. It's a very different individual as well that is risk averse. So when you match up a higher quality individual with really solid technology from a security perspective, you know, what you find is you've got the perfect marriage of um, a really secure infrastructure at the end of the day. I know, I know Unifor continues to evolve its product stack as it relates to verification. I know we're excited about what you guys are doing. What have you found um, as you think about kind of the market as it relates to kind of secure solutions for work from home? So this is something which has really um, intrigued many of our BPO partners, as well as the, the large enterprises as well. Uh, earlier on, the agents were sitting right next to you. Um, <laughs> and all, all of a sudden, they disappeared. And they're working from home from the suburbs of Philippines or suburbs of, of Dallas or in, in Bombay. Uh, and now, you, you need to ensure that you know it is the same set mm -hmm. of people who are, who are actually taking calls. So security has taken a very active, uh, has become a lot more important uh, for organizations. And they are relying on partners like you um, in order to provide them with the answers to some of these challenges. There's, there's nothing like 100% secure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all one can do is to reduce the risk of exposure. Absolutely. And, 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 and we endeavor to create such products, and we have a, a product on those lines, uh, which is called as the U Trust Agent. Uh, which uses voice biometrics to ensure that if it is Robert who's supposed to take call, it is Robert, and you do it on every call or multiple times on a call, and and hopefully this will resonate with with partners like yourself and and with with large enterprises that uh, this is one more way to secure it. And uh, mm -hmm. as I said, there's no perfect way to secure, but this is one way to be assured that uh, you have a more secure operations. So, uh, Robert. Um, RPA has been a technology which has been, let's say, in vogue for the last four or five years. <laughs> uh, it has been more focused towards the back office side of it mm -hmm. um, and more towards the, you know, the claims processing or, you know, enrollment or billing. Have you seen any use cases which has emerged in the contact center side of it? Yeah, I mean, I think apps, absolutely there has been. Um, definitely not, you know, in, I said, I would say as great frequency as, as some of the areas in which you've discussed. Um, but there, are, you know, is a multitude of processes which are kind of very basic, um, if you will, that are still done, if you will, in the contact center today, that in turn, if you will, could be done through full automation, right? You, know, you even think about some of the verification activities that agents need to go through today to kind of verify identity sometimes on a live call, you know, without, if you will, um, automation intervening there. And that's a great example of a use case where, you know, RPA can make absolute sense as verification, if you will, in real time in the context of a call, preventing an agent from having to do so as well. Um, or even pre-call at the end of the day. And I think those are just some examples of ways that, you know, folks will be using that more and more and more without question. Right, and we at Unifo believe that uh, RPA has a big role to play in contact centers and mm -hmm. you're right with the use cases. You know, things like, the, the, there are a number of times when, when a call comes in, okay? And, and let's say there's a new agent or somebody who does this for a part-time, um, there are steps which can be taken. You know, you have to go in and file a complaint or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fill up a form. RPA can take over some of those activities, which will ensure a lot more accuracy in terms of the uh, the paperwork has been filed correctly. Uh, so we firmly believe that uh, RPA will play a bigger role in in the contact center operations for in, in months to come and years to come. Yeah, and I think it'll continue to evolve. Like when you when you take the fact that there's so much of this activity that can occur in a call that's automated, if you will, and using the RPA to do so, it really allows the agent to create a much more meaningful experience with that customer that's then memorable enough to generate a higher NPS result. So when you combine 
you know, an RPA product such as which Unifor makes available, along with, you know, virtual first world-class learning that Arise enables for the agents, right? And then you add to that ACW automation to drive cost control. And then you add on top of that, you know, the flexible capability that Arise offers to match customer demand with agent availability to ensure you have great service levels, not at the, just at the end of the day, but every 30 minute increment. That's a powerful combination from a technology and human capital um, scenario that is a win-win situation, frankly, for both supplier and buyer at the end of the day. Well, uh, Robert, I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, this was a very interesting discussion and, uh, and I hope to uh, continue it at some of the time very soon. Yeah, thank you, Jaffer, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much.